Welcome back to Runiverse. I'm Andrew, and today I'm playing Marvel Champions. This is one of the new Hero Packs Gambit, and I'm playing against the Hood because I'd really like to beat him. If you didn't see my previous video, I played Rogue against the Hood as well, so you can check out that video to see how I fared last time. But let's take a look at Remy LeBeau. He's got three recovery value, so I can exhaust him to regain three health while he's in this form, alter ego form. He is also a thief. He has the very rare ability to interact with the villain and the schemes while in alter ego form. We can exhaust him and look at the top two cards of the encounter deck, discard one and remove threat from a scheme equal to the number of boost icons on that card. So it's a pretty special little feature of Remy here as a thief. In hero form, he is Gambit, one thwart to attack and three defense. He can charge the card, place a charge counter, or throw the card. When you play an attack event, remove up to three charge counters from here to deal an extra damage for each one removed. So we're definitely going to be wanting to play attack events and charging up those cards. I haven't played with him yet, but we'll see how it goes. This time, unlike with Rogue, I did find a deck list from Marvel CDB, so hopefully their deck building was better than mine. No spoilers for how that game went in case you didn't watch it yet. But we're playing against the hood. I'm playing on standard difficulty, so I'm gonna to need to beat him on stage one as well as stage two in order to win. One scheme and one attack sounds not too scary, but his foul playability discards the top card of the encounter deck. If it doesn't belong to the hood, we deal ourselves in an extra encounter card. Oh, it says deal it to yourself. Well, I definitely played that wrong before. And I'm actually going to be triggering that ability right away because of main scheme 1B here, making connections, which says each player must resolve the hood's foul play ability. Uh, so I'm going to have to do that right away. It's, if it, we get five threat here, it's going to advance to the second stage. But he's actually got three stages to go through before we lose via that method. It starts with one threat per player, which is one. It will gain one threat per player per turn. And the rules of the hood also have us set aside seven encounter sets of our choice, but I prefer to just do it randomly, except for the first one where I cheated a little bit. Instead of making it random, I chose to use Exodus. So that is the encounter set that came with the Gambit Hero Pack. I wanted to try it out, so I put Exodus into that deck already. The other six I will determine randomly as needed by rolling dice on all of these encounter sets here with my beautiful storage solution of handwritten note cards. So let's check this card. It is not a hood card, which means I'm going to be dealing it to myself as a face down encounter card. And it is gang up. So I know that an extra attack is going to be coming in at me during the villain phase. So that's nice little information that I wasn't using before. I've got my opening hand here. I've already resolved a mulligan. And unfortunately, I mulliganed away several of Gambit's signature attacks because I just didn't think they'd be that useful from the beginning of the game. We'll see if I regret that later. And even though he can be a thief, we're going to go ahead and switch to our hero form. We can change for free once per round. So I'll change into Gambit. May as well go ahead and charge the card. The way they spelled that with the D-E, it just makes me want to do a bad accent. Or makes me want to do a good accent. That's just not in the cards. Right, so I think I'm going to come out the gate swinging. I will... Well, let's hold off on attacking. I'm going to play Sunfire. And this is a... An X-Men hero, hero, well, an ally. Two health, one thwart, two attack, both with a consequential damage, meaning he's going to hurt himself a little bit every time I use him, and once he's got two damage on him, he'll be defeated. But after I play him, I can pay an energy resource to choose an attachment with the text hero action or hero response and discard it. It's a very wordy way of saying that if the villain had weird extra cards attached to things that I had other means of getting rid of, I could get rid of it via Sunfire instead. So... I don't think that's going to be happening here, but of course it depends on what the Red Hood brings out, but it's definitely not happening right now. So I'm not going to pay the extra energy resource instead. I'm just going to pay two resources for that. And in fact, I've got a Molecular Acceleration card that actually generates two resources, an energy and a strength. The type doesn't matter in this case because I'm just paying for the two. But it says when you spend this, place a charge counter on Gambit, which is kind of a special rare feature that a card has an ability when you spend it but it's going to put gambit up to two charges and now i've paid for sunfire so i can put him into play that's one of my three allies i'm allowed to have out and i'm going to use him to attack so he takes that consequential damage i mentioned he attacks for two so i'm going to reduce the hood from 14 down to 12. Mm -hmm. then i'm going to play warrior skill costs two so this time i'm going to pay by discarding these two cards, each of which only generates one resource. 
And this card has three uses, warrior counter. So it's going to have these three counters on it. And when I attack, I can remove one to deal an extra damage with that attack. So I think I will go ahead and attack with Gambit, spending one counter from warrior skill. So it's just got two left. And instead of attacking for two, he'll attack for three, bringing the hood down to nine. We've got one card left. Oh, and it's the wrong card. I meant to save Gambit Staff. So this is the one I'm saving. As I end my hero phase, I will ready all of my cards and I will draw up to Gambit's hand size, which is six in Alter Ego, but only five in Hero. I already have one because I'm saving it. So I'll draw four more and go into the villain phase. The first thing that happens is the main scheme gets one threat per player. So it goes up to two. Then the hood will activate against me because I'm hero form. The ad activation will be an attack. His attack is one, but he gets to add a boost based on the number of icons on that card. It could do extra damage. So I'm going to have Sunfire defend for me and let's take a look at how much damage the hood is dealing. That's one boost icon on this card. So this is going to go to the encounter discard and that damage from one becomes two, which is enough, of course, to take out Sunfire. So he'll go to my discard pile. Then I get my encounter cards. One's dealt to me. One was already dealt to me. I already know what this is. So the hood's going to attack me again. I could defend. Gambit has a nice defense of three, but I think I'll let the attack go through this time. I am playing aggression, so let's see who can win this race here. So the hood is going to attack me again, this time with one boost and a star. So I have to read that boost of special ability after this activation ends. Resolve the hood's foul play. That's annoying. So I'm going to take one damage plus one from that boost. Puts Gambit down to seven because he only starts with nine health. And then we have to resolve foul play checking if this is a hood card it is a hood card so that's lucky it's just discarded and then we get our normal encounter card which is a psionic shield this is from the exodus pack it says attached to a minion there are no minions so it's going to have surge instead which means this goes away and we get a new card and it's assault there's another attack again i'm just going to let it go through so that's one damage plus zero boost so gambit goes down to six and i'm going to say that was a much less bad first villain phase than what Rogue had to deal with. Speaking of Rogue, I'm gonna go ahead and charge the card up to three and then play Gambit's signature ally card, which is Rogue. She costs one less for each charge counter on my identity, which is three, so I only have to pay one. And I think I'm gonna pay with this Looking for Trouble card. So this is a card that always I see in like these deck lists, but I don't love it. So you discard cards until you get a minion and then you put into play a gauge with you, but it costs zero and you get to remove three threat from the main scheme. And now Gambit's kit also, or not his kit, but his deck list in particular has a bunch of cards that can pretty well clean out minions and benefit from having multiple enemies in play. So it makes sense that you'd want to put an enemy into play or an extra ally. But I happen to know that the only minion in that deck is Exodus himself. And I do not need Exodus to come out. I might have to reread. I don't remember, but I think he gets that psionic shield card attached to him. Like he'll go out and then find the psionic shield, which basically means I have to beat him twice. I don't want to beat him twice. I don't even want to have to beat him once. If there were like small minions mixed in, I would probably go for it. But as it is, I'm just spending that as its resource to pay the one cost of Rogue. And she has toughness, which means the first time she takes damage, all of that damage will be prevented. So if I attack or thwart with her, she'll take one consequential damage, which will be prevented by the tough which feels like kind of a waste. I'm just going to not use her this turn and let her defend and attack most likely. And looks like I'm going to be saving a card again. I wonder if I should be using those warrior skill cards. It seems like this is better suited for making sure you hit the right number of damage. You need to take out minions that are out, not just throwing every point of damage at the enemy, because if that's what it does, then it's basically a two cost for three damage, which is not great so i might not just spend those willy-nilly anymore i think i'm going to be saving this card one by one and i'm going to play that gambit staff that i saved cost one so i'm going to spend melee for that and this says when an enemy attacks exhaust the staff to deal damage to that enemy so i'll put that into play and i'll go ahead and attack with gambit i could attack with him for two or I could go to Alter Ego, I'll get an extra card, and I could thwart a little bit off of there. But then I can't use the staff because that's a hero interrupt. Also, then the enemy wouldn't attack, and I Rogue would just be sitting here waiting. All right, let's stick with the aggression mode. I'm just going to attack for two, bringing the hood down to seven. Draw until I have five cards, which means four more. Ready my stuff. Add one up to three. If it gets to five, it will advance. The hood is going to attack. I'm going to defend with Rogue. He gets a boost card, which is an advance no threat so rogue just prevents one damage with her tough 
after all, and now she's exhausted, and then I get an encounter card, which is Acolyte Frenzy, also from Exodus. Each Acolyte minion activates, if you're not engaged with an Acolyte, it has Surge, so different card. This time it is Upper Hand. When revealed hero, the hero, the hood attacks you and resolve foul play. So this time I guess I'm just taking it. Actually, I think I will defend this time because I have this card, Natural Agility. I still don't know if it's totally worth it, but I'm going to get a charge counter out of it, which is nice. It says, when you defend, you can play this card and place a charge counter on Gambit, and for each charge counter on him, get plus one defense. So instead of having three defense, I have seven. The hood is attacking for one plus three, so that's actually four damage, so I've definitely prevented that, so that's nice. Oh, and I should exhaust the staff to deal one damage to the hood, putting him down to six. I could have done that on either of the attacks, but now it's only once because it's exhausted. But I still have to resolve foul play, so let's check this card. That is not from the hood set, so it's dealt as a face down encounter card. We're still during the encounter resolution step, so I've got to resolve that one too, but that's another Acolyte Frenzy, which has Surge, so I get Unbridled Ambition. This has two threat on it, plus Hinder two, so two threat per player, so it's actually going to have four. When the villain phase begins, each player must resolve foul play. So as long as this card is out, that will happen, but if I can remove four threat, that will go away. Now it's my turn. I'm actually starting my turn with three of my cards already exhausted. So I'm not going to be able to use Rogue, Gambit, or the Staff. Of course, the Staff only triggers during the enemy turn anyway. Now my hand is a bit awkward with only four cards. I could play Professor X, which could be pretty good. Or I can play one by one, which deals two damage for one cost and actually does a good chunk of damage. But the one cost isn't super relevant because if I did play that, I wouldn't be able to play anything else anyway. So it's basically costing my whole hand. But you know what? I think I'm going to go into Alter Ego form. I'm not going to be able to use Thief Extraordinaire because it requires exhausting and he's already exhausted. But I'm going to play Creole Charmer, which costs two. And I'm going to pay with Professor X, I think, and Aggressive Energy. Both of that feels bad because Aggressive Energy... You know what? Maybe one by one is pretty replaceable. It's good, but replaceable. So the question is, do I save Professor X or Aggressive Energy? Aggressive Energy, when spent, adds a damage to the attack that it's helping to pay for. If it's not helping to pay for an attack, then it's just a resource like anything else. But Professor X is a pretty strong card. I think I'm going to save him. We'll see if I even end up playing him, but that's how we're going to pay for Creole Charmer and Alter Ego action. So I can only play it in Alter Ego form, which of course that's why I just switched. Remove three threat from a scheme. I'm going to take it all off the main scheme because if it removes the last threat from that scheme, confuse the villain. So now as I go into the villain phase, the hood won't be able to scheme because he's confused. But that's all I'm going to do. So already as I end my turn, now I get to draw up to six. I already have the one card, but because his alter ego hand size is a bit bigger, I get an extra card, which is another reason to do that. The main scheme will get one. Unbridled Ambition will trigger, unfortunately. So we have to check this. It is a hood card, so nothing bad happens, actually. The hood will try to activate against us. Since we're in alter ego form, he'll try to scheme, but he's confused, so he can't. And then we skip to getting an encounter card which is Assault. If you're in Alter Ego form, it has Surge. And we get a Psionic Shield. There's no minions, so it has Surge. And we get Establish Dominance. Attached to your identity, that would be me. After the hood activates against you, resolve his foul play. In Alter Ego action, you can exhaust and place two threat on the main scheme to discard it. All right, so now I'm going to have choices. I'm already in Alter Ego form. It's now my turn again. Could just exhaust this, get rid of it, but I put two threat on making connections. Did I forget to charge last turn? I think I forgot to charge. I think he should have five. No, I'm not sure. I'll leave it at four. I didn't actually exhaust yet, but I'm thinking about it. So my hand is kind of inefficient. I have six cards. Three of them cost three. And if I were to pay for one of them, I would only have two cards left, which is not enough to do anything except for play a one cost card. But I really have... I have a two cost card I'd really like to play, and I have a zero cost card that I don't really want to play. But for the sake of experimentation and not having much better to do, let's bring out 
Exodus. So I'm going to play Angela, which is a card I don't like, but I see it in a lot of lists. Last time I played her, she just went straight to the discard pile. So I'm going to look at the top 10 cards of the encounter deck for a minion and put it into play. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure Exodus is who we're going to find in here. And here he is, the only minion there. The rest of this gets shuffled back. So you got one scheme and one attack, but he has retaliate one, which means every time I attack him, uh, I take a damage in return. He has villainous, which means when he activates with his one scheme and one attack, he will get boost cards just like the hood does. Six health and searching counter deck and discard pile for the psionic shield. And uh, yeah, he gets a psionic shield, which says he gets plus one more scheme, plus one more attack. And when he would leave play, he heals completely and then loses the shield. So now we have our psionic shield exodus. I knew what I was getting myself into, but let's see how it goes. I think I will go ahead and uh, exhaust. No, you know what? Hmm. Yeah, let's get let's get rid of that. So I'm gonna have to add two threat here, but I'm gonna get rid of this established dominance to avoid a few extra foul plays. Then I'm gonna switch to hero form. I'm going to charge the card. So now we do have five. Thinking I should have six, but and you know what? Let's play into the fray. So I'm gonna pay with these three cards. Unfortunately, Professor X hate to see you go. Aggressive energy spent to help an attack is gonna add one damage. So that six damage is gonna become seven to a minion. So that's gonna be Exodus. For each point of excess damage, remove a threat from the main scheme. We are gonna be doing some excess damage because well, the damage actually has to be dealt. So six is enough to take out Exodus. And I can spend some of my charges. Let's, I'm just going to do it. Let's spend both the, or two charges. I can spend up to three, but I'm going to increase that damage from six, then seven, then up to nine to do six, seven, eight, nine, and remove all three threat from the main scheme. Now that will defeat Exodus. And I know that when you defeat a minion, they don't get to retaliate. Retaliate meaning he's going to deal one back to me for attacking him. But since he's not actually leaving play, it's like if he would leave play, instead heal him and lose the shield. So I don't know how that works with retaliate, but I'm thinking he's still in play. He didn't really go anywhere. So I'm going to take the retaliate damage, even though I don't want to. But we finally used a few of Gambit's charges. We still have the full three. I'm saving the charged card as my last card in hand. And I'm not going to be able to defeat Exodus. I'm going to have Rogue actually start on this scheme over here, the Unbridled Ambition. Angela doesn't have any thwart value, so I'm just going to have her attack for two. And that can go... Uh, I'm going to put it on Exodus. Not sure if I need to. No, let's just put it on the hood, putting him down to four. Then I can ready and go into the villain phase, drawing up to five, so four more cards. I don't think I've spent all of my cards on any turns this game, which is a bummer. Both of my allies should have taken a consequential damage for their actions. One threat goes on to the main scheme. The hood will attack Gambit. I could still get a couple more uses out of my allies, or one more use before they block, but five health isn't a lot to play around with. I'm just gonna uh, defend. They're both just doing one damage plus villainous, or a, a boost. All right, I'm gonna defend against the hood. So he's attacking for one plus two boost. So it's actually three damage. I prevented the full amount. I'm going to use the staff to hit him back for one, bringing him down to three. Then Exodus is going to attack. I'm just going to take this one. So that's one plus a boost of also two for three total, bringing Gambit down to two. Then I get an encounter card. Oh, and I should have done Unbridled Ambition first. So I should have flipped. Well, I should have. It was shuffled, so it doesn't matter. But that is a hood card. So it's discarded. And then our normal encounter card is the hood's pistol. It's going to attach to the hood. Give him plus one scheme and attack. Hero actions spend mental and strength resources to discard this card. So that's an example of Sunfire from the beginning. Sunfire could have uh, burned that away with an energy extra. But of course that didn't quite line up. So put this here and take my turn. Well, we'll start out by grabbing a charge counter. I'm going to have Rogue thwart and finish off the Unbridled Ambition finally. I'm going to play Martial Prowess. Uh, I'm going to pay with Strength, which generates two resources. Put that under my control, and I can make a Strength resource for an attack event every turn now. And I'll do it now, along with paying Psylocke, unfortunately, in order to pl finally play a charged card. We can use three of our counters from the throw the card ability to add three more damage, making that seven. 
And because I spent at least one counter, it's going to have ranged, which means Exodus cannot retaliate. In fact, Exodus is who's getting hit by this thrown charged card. But since we're going to be defeating him, I don't think the retaliate would matter anyway, but that's what range is for just in case. Two counters means it has piercing, so if he were tough, that would be ignored. And three counters means overkill, which means the excess damage is going to go to the hood. So seven damage, six of it will finish Exodus, and one will go over to the hood, putting him down to two. And then I'm going to have Angela attack for two and bring the hood stage one down to zero, which means we move on to stage two, who is basically the same, but he has plus one thwart now, two thwart instead of one. He's gonna have 16 health. If I defeat that 16 health, I will win, however. And he has a win revealed effect, which is now choose a set aside modular and counter set at random, then shuffle it in. That's the first, we haven't seen him do that yet. So let's pull out our dice and I'm going to roll a d62. So my eight sider is going to be used as a d7. 42. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 22, 23, 24, 25. 42 is personal nightmare. Mysterio has joined with the red hood or just the hood. There's no actual Mysterio in this encounter set, just some evil doppelgangers. So these cards get shuffled into what's left of the encounter deck, which is only two cards. A lot of nightmares in the encounter deck now. Oh, and his foul play is actually different now. Discard the top two cards of the encounter deck. Deal the first card discarded this way that does not belong to the hood as an encounter card. So it's increasing our chances and shuffling in that nightmare stack is also increasing the chance of hitting non-hood cards. I only have one card left and it's another charged card, but we're not going to be able to use it now and we don't have many charges anyway, so we'll just end the turn. And now I've definitely got some minions that are ready to block. In fact, should I be in alter ego form? I don't think so because, well maybe, but it'd be basically guaranteed to advance. It'd be one, two, three, four. If I get a single boost on the activation, it would advance. So I'm gonna stay in attack form because I know that if he advances, the next scheme is gonna make us go get another encounter set and it's gonna make us trigger foul play, which is now like basically 100% chance of an extra encounter card. So I'll let him attack. I'll allow it to have, I'll only have one of five cards in my hand instead of six. So just one threat gets added here. He's going to attack me for one plus a boost. I'm going to go ahead and defend with Angela and he's going to boost his zero and actually was a hood card. So if he did any foul play, that would be the one we wanted to hit. So he's going to hit Angela for only one damage, but that's all she needed to hit the bin and then one encounter card off the top is deepest fears peril while you're resolving this no one can help you well i'm by myself gambit is riding solo when reveal discard cards from the top of your deck equal the number of cards in your hand if at least one identity specific card was discarded this way place a threat on the main scheme well that seems likely all right so one two three four five we did have three identity specific cards which is at least one, which means one threat, putting it up to three. Well, that doesn't seem very bad at all, honestly. And that's it. That's all you got. So now I just need to do 16 damage. Let's get a charge. Oh, and he actually attacked, so I should have used my staff. I'm going to go ahead and do that to put him down to 15. All right, so I'm going to play charged card. It's the one we saved. I'm going to pay with energy, which makes two resources. It's going to do four damage. I'm going to spend two charges to add two more damage. Range and piercing aren't going to matter, so we're just going to do four, five, six damage, putting the hood down to nine. Then I'm going to attack with Gambit, putting him down to seven. I'll attack with Rogue, which is gonna deal her her third consequential damage and she'll be defeated, but that puts the hood down to five. I'm gonna play a one by one by paying with the X-Jet, discard that. It's gonna do two damage to an enemy, puts him down to three. If it defeated him, I could do two damage to somebody else. And unfortunately, we're not going to be able to see this special feature of this game because we've had basically no minions except for, of course, Exodus. But I think the shtick of this deck, the reason the uh, creator of the list must have put it together. And by the way, all of the links in the description so you can check out the list as well. But when this throw the card ability adds damage to an attack event's damage, it attacks it. It adds that damage to every instance of that damage being dealt. So, for example, let's say I had spent three charge counters on this one by one, that two would become five. And then if that five damage defeated its target, this two would also become five. So that's kind of the clever little thing 
uh, you basically get to double the charge bonuses by playing card, single attack cards that damage multiple enemies. So Gambit also has a card in his kit that has that, and it has this very quirky looking text, which is that it deals zero damage, and then it has another sentence that says it deals zero damage again, and then another sentence that says it deals zero damage again. But of course, as we just went over, if you spent three charges, that would be three, three, and three damage. But anyway, that is our penultimate attack, because finally I'm going to play with one by play another one by one. I have no cards in my hand, but I'm going to exhaust martial prowess to pay a strength resource toward that attack event. I'm also going to use this warrior skill, which I've been saving for whatever reason, add one more damage and make that two into a three, which will bring the hood down to zero. And now I have defeated the hood. That was a very different game from the rogue playthrough. So if you want to see the hood get up to a little bit more shenanigans, definitely check that out. A lot of villains hit this stage with the uh, extra encounter sets getting shuffled in. We got to see a hint of Mysterio this time, but that's nothing compared to what Rogue got to go up against. Also, the hood never even got to advance. So yeah, I definitely think Gambit did not get covered in a pile of rocks the way Rogue did right off the bat. And then the other thing was just he has a lot of damage that we just kept dealing. Uh, which was nice as well but yeah somehow i managed to do all the damage and keep the scheme on the first thing i did go down to two but that was a measured approach so feels nice to have no cards in my hand and a bunch of exhausted cards at the end of the game feels like i did things efficiently even though i ended almost every turn with a card left over but anyway let me know what you think thanks for watching subscribe so we can get more subscribers and bye